Piracy is the leading cause in the collapse of entertainment industry revenues. It destroys jobs and businesses, kills creativity, and probably leads to mass murders and cannibalism for all we know. How else could you explain that a single illegally downloaded song can get you a maximum penalty of $150,000? By way of comparison, careless driving, with no seatbelt on, without any form of insurance, while drunk, speeding, and simultaneously yelling on your phone, will only get you $30,000 in fines. That's a fifth of one illegally downloaded song. Police warns us about piracy funding drug dealers and terrorism. Absolutely everyone, from your cab driver to a minister of state, can tell you how piracy destroys lives, artists, and the economy. So it would be kind of ridiculous if we told you it was quite the opposite, wouldn't it? But that's exactly what we plan on doing. One of the most important researchers of piracy studied 150 of the most popular movies over the span of seven years. His findings? No evidence that file sharing had had any significant impact on revenues. He did estimate a $200 million reduction in earnings, but that's only, and we quote, three-tenths of a percent of what movies actually earn. So even if piracy has some negative impact, it's less than one percent, which makes it pretty much statistically irrelevant. Other studies have pointed out that piracy may have actually boosted the bottom line. File sharer behavior has been similarly widely researched for more than 10 years now by universities, industries, independent analysts, and even by government agencies. All the findings we discovered were highly consistent and painted a very accurate picture. Pirates are the best customers. You heard that right, Mr. Film Distribution Company Chairman. Pirates are more likely to be paying consumers of a wide range of media and entertainment. In physical media, that's what non-pirates buy legally, and this is what pirates do. The biggest difference can be seen in game sales. Now, if we take a look at digital media sales, which at present tend to surpass physical sales, the picture becomes much clearer. Pirates buy up to four times more music, three times more movies, seven times more games, and four times more books. Ticket and merchandise sales paint the same picture. File sharers buy more concert tickets, buy up to three times more music merchandise, attend movie theaters one and a half times more than non-pirates, and buy up to three and a half times more movie or TV merchandise. Mr. Film Distribution Company Chairman, along with Mrs. Music Executive, Mrs. Game Industry, and Mrs. Book Distribution, don't agree on much. But they do tend to see eye to eye on one thing. Revenues are always going down because of piracy. But if pirates buy more, then where, we wonder, can we see a corresponding increase in sales? We need not go any further than your average pirate friend for the answer to that question. Isn't that right, Pirate Cat? You're absolutely right. As I see it, file sharing doesn't automatically have to mean more sales. There's that crappy song I wouldn't have ever paid for or that game I wanted to try out before I bought it. Well, Pirate Cat is right. A number of studies support his theory too. While piracy is currently going down by up to 76% in some countries, the local entertainment industries are not seeing a similar increase in sales. Norway has only seen an uplift of 1.5% over the past five years, while the UK Spotify service has actually posted a hefty 6.1% decline over the past two years. So, the link between piracy and revenues doesn't seem to be one. And this is where you tell us to cut the crap. Pirates steal. It's morally wrong, they do it just because they want free stuff, and there's nothing that can stop them from running businesses into the ground. You may be right, but let's look at the data for a second. Sweden, the birthplace of the Pirate Bay, might provide some good answers. Nowadays, more Swedes than ever agree that file sharing should not be legal. Still, the percentage of young people who have never shared files has gone up by almost 40% since 2009. In their own words, it's not that they now have more respect for the law, but that new, better legal services have been introduced, such as Spotify and Netflix. The study actually reflects something many file sharers have known for a long time. 
It's legal, good quality services that drive people to pay for stuff, not harsh copyright laws. You think doubling down on laws and bad ideas can make you more money? <laughs> Wishful thinking. 